uh, it is nine o'clock. I'm going to start recording. Um, good morning, everybody. So this is it. This is the last week of this trimester. Isn't that crazy, guys? We've made it so far. Um, so we're going to have, excuse me. So let me kind of lay out the week for you. Um, remember that you guys have until Thursday till midnight to turn in all uh, assignments. Okay, so if you guys, and that's 80% of your grade. So if you still have missing assignments, we want to get those turned in because that's the vast majority of your grade. So make sure if you guys have missing assignments to get those turned in. Okay, like that is priority number one this week. If you have missing assignments, get those turned in. Um, if you check Skyward and it says return to improve grade, that means that you turned in an assignment that was less than four out of 10 points. So I returned it. So if you wanna work on that to get a better grade, you can, okay? And if you guys have questions about that, we can ask now in chat or we can we can talk, uh, talk after class, okay? So uh, what's gonna be happening this week? I am gonna be posting your final today uh, at 1230 so at uh, right after right after noon so it's just past noon right so at 1230 you guys uh, can go on to Google classroom and you can uh, can see your final now your final is gonna be a Google form so remember Google form does not save your progress so you have to submit all of your answers at once so what some of you might want to do is you're like, well, hey, I'm only going to be able to do a little bit at a time is that you can just have like a piece of paper and you can write down your answers for each one. So then that way, when you when you get them all done, you can just go type in all your answers at once. Does that make sense, guys? Does anybody have questions about that? So the finals worth 10 percent of your grade. OK, so. If some of you, uh, where do we go first? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. So we're, um, so you're, so the final is going to be posted at 1230 today to get the review. We're doing the review right now. So we're going to, we're just going to do some more. So remember last week we had two review days. So this is our third review day. So, um, we're gonna uh, go ahead. There is no review assignment. We're just doing it in class. We're doing everything in class today. So we're just gonna do problems um, together. And then if you guys have questions, we'll just answer them right here, okay? Because um, I, I just want you guys to be in class doing this. And then if you have questions, uh, then feel free to ask. Um, okay, so this first question, so we're gonna go ahead and, so does anybody else have any questions about uh, when assignments are due or about the final exam or anything like that? Because you guys always have good questions. Okay, so we're just gonna, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gotta, gotta go through some basic skills that are gonna, that you're gonna need for your final exam. Um, so this first one, Right, so I can't give you the questions that are going to be on the exam, but I can get we can practice all the skills you're going to need. So the first thing is being able to use Desmos is super important. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to show me that you can graph. Let's do um, let's graph y equals one point six times uh, 3.14 to the X on decimals graphing ca calculator. Okay, so again, maybe not a question that's going to be on the final, but we're going to go ahead and try this out. Uh, you, there was homework, uh, there was the, uh, one of the reviews. So 6.4 review. Um, let me go to Google classroom and just double check that that was posted. 
didn't pop up. Let me take a look. Um, my goodness, it didn't it didn't pop up, did it? Um, I'm gonna fix that right now. So it's worth extra credit. So uh, just give me a second. So that assignment is worth extra credit. It didn't pop up. Um, I wish I wish you guys had let me know earlier. I didn't know it didn't pop up. Um, Weird. So it didn't pop. Sorry. So it, for some reason it didn't get, um, okay. So it didn't, it didn't get put into, um, it didn't get put into Google class. So I'm just going to say review 6.4. There goes my paper. And then I'm going to say, um, on big ideas. Okay, in category assignments, due date, I'm gonna say Thursday by midnight. All right, so it should pop up on Google Classroom now. It already is on big assignments, uh, big ideas assignments, so it's popped up right there. Um, I'm just going to get the... Okay, so it should pop up now. I'm really sorry about that. Okay. So it's on Google Google Classroom now. Sorry, so it just didn't get posted. But the assignment is extra credit. So it's, you have until Thursday at midnight to do that, okay? But it is extra credit, so don't worry about that. So let's go back to this. Uh, let's make sure you guys know how to graph this. So it's just, I wanna make sure you guys know how to use Desmos Graphing Calculator. So, um, so make sure you open up another tab. So like I'm going to open up another another window right now. I'm gonna type in Desmos graphing calculator. So Desmos graphing calculator. Here I'm gonna go like that. Okay. So make sure that you guys can are able to access this. Is there anybody that is having issues with getting Desmos graphing calculator open? Uh, you're going to also want Desmos here. So I'm also going to open um, Desmos Scientific Calculator. So I'm going to have both. So I have my Scientific Calculator and my Graphing Calculator. So I want to make sure when we're doing this final, right? So when we have this final, you guys have access to both. Okay. So you have access to the Scientific Calculator and you have access to the graphing calculator. Is anybody having issues getting these on a separate tab? Okay. So uh, I just want you guys to practice graphing this. So to graph this, it's gonna be important if you don't know the shortcuts, there's a little keyboard down in the bottom left. So if we open up that keyboard, uh, I can start typing this in. Now, what we're gonna type in is we're gonna type in everything after the equal sign okay so uh and i kind of put it there in brackets so i'd go 1.6 and then 3.14 and then to get the exponent i'm going to click this a to the b button down here and i just really wanted to make sure you guys knew that right so a to the b the shortcut is shift six but uh, a little A to the B here. I do that and see how it all of a sudden my, my little blinky cursor goes up. So then I'm gonna type in X 
and boom, it grabs it for me, okay? So this again was just like, hey, do you know how to use the graphing calculator? Because on this final, you can use the graphing calculator, you can use the scientific calculator, okay? So you're gonna have to open those both up on your, on your own. All right, so that I just wanted to make sure you guys know how to use the calculators. Does anybody have any questions there? Thank you guys for the feedback. I appreciate it. Here, I'm going to put this over here for now. All right. Okay, cool. So again, that first one, just want to make sure you guys know how to, to use it. Um, Last my pen when everything fell down. Okay. So now let's get into some more problems. So... This next one is going to be does the function below, oops, represent exponential growth or decay? Sorry, I didn't mean to make that capital. Okay, so does the function below, oops, and that's bellow. Okay, does, sorry, I'm making all sorts of typos. Sorry about that, guys. So does the function below represent exponential growth or decay? Okay, so here's our equation. Y equals 2.17 times 1.67 to the T. Okay. So does this function below represent exponential growth or decay? So you guys are just seeing if you remember, right? Where do we look? How do we do that? Okay, so hopefully you guys are, are working with me. Thank you for the feedback, I appreciate it. Right, to do this, we're gonna be looking at the base, right? And the base is gonna tell us what's gonna happen, right? Because if the base is greater than one, it's growth. And if the base is less than one, then we have decay. So this base right here is greater than one or more than one. So it is growth. Okay. I know, and, and the reason why I did this problem is last class we were working on this and uh, we, we, we struggled a little bit with identifying growth and decay. So I just wanna make sure that you guys know how to do that, right? So if you're looking at for something that's growth or decay, you're looking at the base and you're saying, okay, is it more than one? Is it less than one? And as always, if you guys have questions, you can uh, go ahead and, and, and do that, okay? All right, three. Okay, so for three, our next question is, Oops, that makes it really hard to see the time. Oh, we're doing great. Okay, so what is the percent? What is the percent rate of change uh, for the equation? Uh, we'll do y equals 0 0.14 times 1.26 to the t. Okay, so 
This question is, what is the percent rate change for the equation y equals 1 point, I'm going to hide this now. So give you guys a little bit time to work on this. Two minutes is, is going to be enough time. So we just want to know what the percent rate of change is for that equation. And just so if you guys are wondering how long the final exam is going to be, it's going to be shorter than one class period. Okay, and we'll talk more about that when we get to the end. Okay, so again, what percentage rate of change? So my percentage rate of change is going to be based off is this growth or decay? So if I look at the base here, okay, I see that 1.26 is more than one. So I'm going to know that this is growth. So if it's growth, my equation is y equals a times the quantity of 1 plus r to the t. So notice here, this is my base, and this is my base. So what that means is, is that 1.26 is going to equal 1 plus r. Right? So this is the base of my if my formula. This is the base of my uh, of 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 what's given. So I know the bases are going to be the same. So if you subtract one from both sides, so I'm going to grab my calculator here, or if you have Desmos open, you can do that as well. So I'm going to take one uh, one point two six minus one, and I get zero point two six equals R. Now we got to be really careful here because this wanted the percent, right? So percent like this. So we want to get this into a percentage. So to get that to a percentage, right? This is out of one. We want to multiply this by 100 so we get it out of 100. So what is 0.26 times 100? That is 26%. And that's how we do that problem. Okay, does anybody have questions about that? So I got 26%. And remember, ask questions, guys. Ask lots of questions. This is this is really our last class, and we'll, right? So we're not actually going to meet next Thursday. So this is our last class uh, until next Monday when we start the new the new trimester. All right, no one has any questions. You're like, crap, I got this 26, 26%. All right.
So let's go. Let's do our next one. So our next question is going to start the same way. It's going to be, what is the percent rate of change for the equation okay so what is the percent rate of change for the equation uh, I'm gonna give you guys time to work on your final if you need it All right so we'll talk about that at the end I didn't mean to shock you there uh, I just felt like some people, like they're busy, like they have family they take care of, um, they work. So what we're going to do on Thursday is we're going to use that. You can have that time to work on your final because I, I figured some people are really busy, right? We have busy lives. So we're going to use that time to work on our final, because, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because like if you can get it done during class time, wouldn't that be nice? That way you don't have to... Um, Right? You don't have to do it like during your time. Yeah. I'm just trying to be nice. I'm not trying to freak people out. Okay. So this one is going to be y equals 1.2 times the quantity of 0 0.68 to the t. Okay. So again, I'm going to give you guys the same amount of time here um, to do this one. All right, hey guys, let's take a look at this. So again, this is, right, the same wording as the last problem, but I'm gonna really wanna focus on first initially here is, right, I first initially wanna take a look at this. I wanna take a look at, um, I wanna take a look at my base. So when I take a look at my base here, I see that it's less than one. So this is gonna be a decay. So I'm gonna look at my notes because you guys should have this in your notes, right? The equation for decay is the initial amount and then it's one minus R, right? So that's the big difference here because it's gonna be less than one, it's minus R, right? And one minus R, right? That's gonna be less than one. So I identify, right? This is my base and this is my base. So I'm gonna set my base is equal to each other. So I'm going to have 1 minus r equals 0 0.68, and we're going to solve for r. Oops. Right, we're going to solve for r. 
Now remember, decay, it takes a little bit more time to do, and it can be a little bit more frustrating, um, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to add R to both sides, and I'm gonna subtract 0 0.68 from both sides. So on the right side, the, the 0 0.68 is gonna go away. On the left side, the R is gonna go away. What am I left with? I'm left with one minus 0 0.68 equals r. And I'm going to type this into my calculator. Okay, and I get 0 0.32. So I get 0 0.3, oops, 2. Gosh, craft, you're making a lot of mistakes today. All right, so I have 0 0.32. Now, remember, this isn't a percent, right? Percent means out of 100. So I'm gonna take this number, I'm gonna multiply by 100, so I get my R equals 32%, right? And that's a 32% decay reduction, okay? Um, and I appreciate it. I have had some students here asking me questions or talking with me. I really appreciate you guys when you interact. Uh, the more that you guys communicate and talk, the better I can make this lesson for you, right? Um, because the more I can get to know you guys and, and what you need. So with that said, does anybody have questions about this? This was definitely the hardest part of, of finding percentages, right? Was the decay, was all of that. I can't tell if you guys are just like super solid and like you get everything that we're doing. I know some of you are there, but I also wanna make sure the people who are still like, oh man, I'm struggling. I wanna make sure your voice is heard. So if you're struggling and this is confusing or, or, or you need help, please let me know. Uh, I wanna be able to help you, okay? Okay, so the last one here. Okay, we're going to, um, yeah, do you, now when you say do, I'm gonna do more problems. Do you wanna do another problem like this? Is that what you're asking for? Like you wanna do another problem like four and three? or um, I was gonna try a different one too. What would you like? Would you like to do another one just like this? Okay, okay, we could do one more just like that. Uh, yeah, let me do one more, and then I have some other problems we can work on too. See guys, this is, this is what I need. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. Yeah, more like four, let's do it, okay. All right, so what is the percent rate of change for the equation. Okay, so I'm just, this is the same wording that we had before. Okay, same wording. Oop, got a new, got someone coming in. Okay, so then we're gonna have y equals, let's do seven fourths, um, 0 0.93 to the T. So I want you to find the percent rate of change with that one. And, and I'm so glad you guys asked for this. Now remember, if you're completely stuck, send me a private chat and I can help you through it. Okay, I don't want people to feel completely stuck because you can do this.
Oh, sorry. I'm getting emails and stuff, and I was checking emails. We ran out of time. So let's take a look at this, guys. I, I hope I hope we're feeling a little bit more confident here. So again, it's all about it's all about that base, right? So we're taking a look here. So the first thing we have to say, is it less than one or more than one? So this is less than one. So I'm going to have decay. So then I write down from my notes the equation for decay. And that's what's really cool about this this year, guys, is that everything is open notes. So in your notes, remember how when we were reviewing, right, The equ you, you should say, okay, it's decay. Here's the equation. Because now, right, I have these bases. So here's one base. Here's the other base. Right? They're going to be the same. They're going to be the same. So I'm going to have 1 minus r equals 0 0.93. Now, are people, is this where people, so where are people getting stuck? Because I know there's lots of places to get stuck. So is it seeing that it's decay and writing down the equation? Is it setting up this? Or is it solving for R? Right? Lots of different places. So if you're getting stuck, try to identify where you're getting stuck so that you can really focus on, hey, I don't want to get stuck here anymore. Okay? So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to see how we have a minus r. I don't want a minus r. So I'm going to add r to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 0 0.93 from both sides. Okay. So I get 1 minus 0 0.93 equals r. And then I'm going to do that in my calculator. So what do we get on my calculator? I get 1 minus 0 0.93. Oops. And I get... 0 0.07 so 0 0.07 equals r so remember i'm going to want to multiply this by a hundred to get it as a percentage so if i just take my answer times 100 i get seven so r equals seven percent right so we're decaying at a rate of seven percent all right, how are you guys feeling there? Do you feel like 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 you're feeling a little bit better from your last one? Maybe you, you saw where you made a mistake. Make sure you guys have this in your notes, right? This is gonna be really good to have when doing your final. Okay, so people are saying they got the right answer. I'm not getting any feedback there. So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to do a different type of problem. So this is problem six. So in this case, uh, we're going to do a table problem. Okay, because we, we did a lot of table problems. So let's try this one. Does this table below... Represent an exponential or linear function. Okay, so does this table below, obviously, there's not a table yet, uh, represent an exponential linear function? So I'm going to make a table. So I'm going to have x on top, y on bottom. I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3 on top. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have 5, 20, 80, and 320. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys um, a little bit to work on this. And then if you have questions, let me know.
So good. I'm, I'm getting people chatting with me. I appreciate you guys sharing. I really appreciate that. Um, so I know some people aren't, uh, right? Some people are going to be really confident with this. Other people are going to be uh, like, oh my gosh, I don't remember this. But remember, you have your notes, right? So if you have your notes, just make sure you take good notes of examples, okay? So the first thing right on the top is my input, right? So I'm just gonna double check. The only thing we've done so far is our input is plus one. So it's always gonna be plus one because that's all we ever we ever got with. So not a big deal there, right? So our input is always gonna be plus one. Now, if we take a look at our output, this is where we're gonna have to decide. So if it's linear, right? Linear means we're gonna add, exponential means we're gonna multiply, okay? I always like to do linear first. It's just easy for me. So maybe maybe you like to check exponential first because it's easier for you, right? We're all a little different. So just remember, if I'm doing linear, that means five plus a number is gonna equal 20. So if the numbers are really big and it's not easy to do in your head, you can always work backwards. And if you're going backwards, you're doing the opposite, right? Think about it. the opposite of walking forward is walking backwards, okay? So five plus something gives me 20, or I can say 20 minus five is what gets me that number. So I get 15, okay, right? And how did I do that? I did 20 minus five, okay? So if you wanted to know how I got that, that's what I did. So 20 minus five, and I can always double check. Five plus 15 equals 20, okay? So then let's see, are we gonna add the same amount here? Well, again, 20 plus what gives me 60? I can always work backwards. So I can always work backwards by going 80 minus 20, right? So this is backwards. 80 minus 20 is 60. Uh-oh, they're not the same, right? Not the same. So not linear, right? Which at this point, it's kind of nice because like, well, it, it's probably going to be exponential. But let's double check for sure. So exponential means we're gonna multiply by the same amount. So just like we went backwards with addition, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I can go 20 divided by five, right? So on my calculator here, I'm gonna go 20 divided by five, and I get four. So let's double check that. Five times four, five times four is 20. So that's really good, right? So let's check the next one. So what am I gonna multiply? Well, I can work backwards, so I can go 80 divided by 20. So let's try that on our calculator. 80 divided by 20 is four. Oh, this is, this is looking really positive, right? So I'm gonna try one more time. So gosh, this is really big numbers, isn't it? But our calculator handles big numbers like a champ. So I'm gonna go 320 divided by 80, and I get four. So all of these are four. So I can, with confidence now, say that this is exponential, and we're multiplying by four. Okay. And that would be my answer. It is exponential, and I know because we're multiplying by four each time. So I'm just sorry, I was just pausing if anybody had questions, right? I just wanna make sure you guys have time to process it. Uh, how do you guys feel? I mean, so really I, I've covered one of every problem that can possibly be on this final. And, and, and this isn't a big, guys, this is like the same size of one of your homework assignments, okay? It's not very big, okay? So I, I know I'm giving you guys lots of time to work on this and I wanna talk about that. So again, I'm going to post this. Your your final is going to be posted today, just afternoon. So it's going to be posted at 1230. 
but that doesn't mean you need to do it right away. If you're still working on missing assignments, that's your priority. Get your missing assignments done. If you guys are like Kreft, I don't have a lot of time outside of school to work on this. Um, you can work on it. So on Thursday, uh, that is, so we have class on Thursday. Uh, and instead of coming to class on Thursday, you can work on your final. Now I'll be here and if you guys log in, I'll just be like, hey, now it's time to, to work on your final. I'll send email reminders because I know we can be forgetful, but that's gonna be time that you guys can work on your final and get it done. And since it's the length of an assignment, you could get your whole final done during what we would have had normal class time, okay? So if you guys are like, hey, I'm really busy and I'd rather work on getting all my other assignments done, then that's what we're gonna plan on. We're gonna plan on, you can get your final done on Thursday during our class time, okay? But I do wanna say if you guys have missing assignments, your missing assignments are worth 80% of your grade. So put, to put things in perspective, your assignments are worth 80% and this test is only worth 10%. So if you have a lot of missing assignments, please get those done. Also check Skyward. If Skyward says you're missing assignment and you're like, Kreft, I turned that in, can you please send me an email? I don't get notifications when you guys turn in late work. So I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to do my best with keeping Skyward updated. But if you see something that's not right, I'm not doing that on purpose. So make sure you guys send me an email if you say, hey, Skyward's not correct, right? So please check Skyward and, um, cause I, and then if I miss something, make sure you let me know so that your grade is accurate. Because uh, come Friday in the evening, I'm gonna be finalizing grades, okay? So all your assignments are due by Thursday at midnight, and this final is gonna be due Friday by noon. Okay, and again, that's a lot of information. I'll send out emails uh, starting, um, starting tomorrow uh, with, with directions. Okay, so that way every day you'll get the you'll get an email saying like, hey, have you worked on your final yet? Um, hey, have you finished all your missing assignments yet? Okay, so this is it, guys. This is our push. Uh, remember, if you guys did not pass first semester, first trimester, that if you pass this trimester, we can we can get your last grade to a passing. So it's super important that you guys pass this trimester. Uh, if you did not pass first trimester. If you pass this trimester, I will change your grade from first trimester. So please, please, please make sure that you guys go, are, are doing that. Um, so again, some people are telling me in chat, can you send me an email? I have, I have two more classes after this. So I, I don't wanna forget, just send me an email and say, hey, Mr. Kreft, I did 6.4 decay three. And it says it's missing. Just send me that in an email. So that way, when, at the end of the day, I can go through the emails and go, oop, I got to do this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if it says you have more missing assignments, uh, sometimes that's, that's an issue with Skyward, right? So always look on Skyward. That's going to be your best bet. I know sometimes if you check Skyward, it says you have X amount of missing assignments. But then when you go look at the class, it's different. What you see in the class is the most accurate. Okay, and if you have questions, you can email me and I can help you out with that. Uh, yeah, if you need help signing in with big ideas, send me an email because I, I don't wanna uh, to do that here, but I, I can get, I have all your login information because your login information for big ideas, you just log in with Clever, so it's the same way that you log in with Gmail. So it should be your Gmail, uh, your Gmail uh, email address, and your Gmail, your school Gmail uh, email address and your school Gmail password. And if you forgot about that, I have it. Yeah, I have it and, and we can get it, we can get on, okay? So send me an email about that because in a second here, I'm gonna have two more classes and I don't wanna forget. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any questions about the end of this trimester? Because we're gonna be together for next trimester as well. Does anybody have any questions or anything I can do to help? I can't stress this enough, guys. Please, we need to pass. If you didn't pass first trimester, because you're like, whoa, like online school is weird. But now you're like, okay, I can do online school. Get it done so that I can blue card your grade from first trimester, okay? That's the deal of a lifetime. 
make sure you guys are passing this trimester. So if you didn't pass first trimester, you are now passing if you're passing, right? So golden opportunity once in a lifetime, you guys, all you have to do is make sure you get to a passing grade this trimester and your first trimester grade will now be passing, okay? Okay, so what I would say is, um, so yeah, so the, the, the test is still worth 10% of your grade. So if you only have, if you're like in the 60% range, so you're just barely passing, um, you don't wanna fail the, the test. And that's why I did three days of review. So we're not gonna fail the final because we've had three days of review, you have good notes, you're gonna be fine, okay? So I know you're thinking worst case scenario, but you're not gonna fail the final, okay? Um, so to avoid that, just make sure you have all your assignments in and that your grade is if your grade is at least a 70% or higher, you're not gonna fail the class from the test, right? Because your test is only worth 10% of your grade. So just make sure your grade, right, is is a C or higher and you're not the, the test won't make you fail. I hope that answers your question. Are there any other questions? We're almost at the end of class. I wanna make sure you guys have Okay, so it's on Thursday, don't come to class, work on your final or your missing assignments. I love it. Hey, and you know what? I'll be here Thursday. So if you log in because you forget, I'll still be here. I'll also send out reminders via email and I'll be like, hey, make sure you're working on missing assignments. Make sure you're working on your final. Here's the due dates, etc. Okay, because I know it's a lot and I know this week is pretty stressful. So I'm gonna try to make it as clear and easy as possible for you guys. So yeah, again, and I just want to reiterate. Uh, so if you come to class next Thursday, I can't help you on the final, but I can help you with missing assignments if you would like. Would you like that? Uh, th then I will be here for you, okay? So next Thursday, we can, we can treat it like office hours. So if you have missing assignments from homeworks, then yeah, I'll, we can use next class as, a, as an office hour and I'll help you guys out. And thank you for asking because, right, I, I would love to help. So let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions? Hey, and I really appreciate you guys. I know that online learning is difficult, uh, but you guys are doing it, and I'm really proud of you guys. Um, we've come a long way, and we, we still have one more trimester to go, but we're doing it, and I am so proud of you guys. So this is the last week. You guys can do it. I'm here to help. Please email me if you have questions. I just, a lot happens in the day. So if you email me, it, it, it helps me remember. It's like a checklist of things I have to do. Um, 